it's math and bass yeah it's time for another video we're gonna do a video right now on piecewise defined functions let's get to it to begin with we are going to review what one of the most elementary piecewise defined functions is even if you didn't know it was piecewise and that is the absolute value function so a lot of times we think about absolute value in terms of a number by definition the absolute value of a number is the distance from zero to that number so if I moved from zero out to some number say X then I would have a distance of X units X units and if I moved out from zero to the left for say to some negative X I'd also you be walking a distance of X units both of these show us what the absolute value of a number is and that is the absolute value of some number X is just the distance from zero to X hence if I walk to the left if I walk to the right if I walk X units from zero I still walk to X units in other words distance units can't be negative so we define the output of an absolute value of something to always be positive you can see already on the screen that we have the absolute value of a function given to us as a rule and that is this rule right here so we're gonna have to think about what this rule means but before we do we can go ahead and just plot the function and we could do this by filling in the table of values that's given to us to the left here so if X is negative 3 the absolute value of negative 3 is 3 if X is negative 2 then the absolute value of negative 2 is 2 go ahead and plot those two points real quick when X is negative 3 the output is 3 when X is negative 2 the output is 2 if X is negative 1 the output is 1 if X is 0 the absolute value of 0 is 0 and then if X is 1 absolute value of 1 is 1 if X is 2 absolute value of 2 is 2 and if X is 3 the absolute value of 3 is 3 so we can start seeing the pattern there on the graph and indeed it looks linear on both sides of zero so I'm gonna go ahead and draw those lines using my handy little tool here draw that line right there make sure it's just as accurate as can be and then we're gonna draw the line on the other side as so again I'll make it nice and accurate and we see the graph of the absolute value function looks like a little V or something and so that's great but how does that graph relate back to the claim definition above notice above the rule absolute value of X which we're calling f of X here which we just graphed it's actually defined to be two different rules depending which value of X you are given and that is notice in this rule right here if you are positive value of X or 0 then your output is just X and we saw that if X was 1 the absolute value of that was 1 if X was 2 the absolute value of that is 2 and so on that is the part of the line on quadrant one so in quadrant one over here this is the graph of the function y equals x and that's true if x is not negative bigger than or equal to zero now 
if x is negative, then we have to turn it to a positive, just like we saw up there. So to do that, if we have a negative number x and we negate it, then it would become positive. Hence, if we have a negative input x, we take the negative of that to turn it positive. So that gives us the line on the left, y equals negative x, and that is true for negative values of x. We saw that. If x was negative 3, then the absolute value of that was positive 3. Negative, negative 3 is 3. If x was negative 2, the absolute value of that was 2. Negative, negative 2 is 2, and so on. So we actually have this one single function here, the absolute value function, and it is defined by different rules depending on which value of x you plug into the function. It's an elementary function, and it helps to give us a little intro into the overall general uh, discussion about piecewise to functions. So in this little statement below, the absolute value function, what we just looked at, it is an example of what we generally call piecewise defined function. So now we're going to go look at what that is in general. Piecewise defined functions. Let's go line by line here. Start in this line. Definition. Piecewise defined function. It's a function that satisfies different rules or formulas or whatever it is on different intervals on its domain. So it behaves differently depending on which input you're talking about. We just saw the most elementary of these types, and that is the absolute value function. Now it's always defined, no matter which x value we plug in, we can find the absolute value of that. Hence, the domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. But we did see a moment ago that if x was not negative, if it belonged to the interval close 0 to infinity, then the function's rule was x. But however, if x was a negative number, then the rule for the function was negative x. And hence, we wrote this entire rule. f of x was the absolute value of x and it was x if x was not negative, if it was positive or equal to zero, and it was negative x if x was negative. This type of way of writing a function is an example of how we write piecewise defined functions. So furthermore, here's the generality. Let's suppose we have a function, call it f of x, and it has you know, k different rules, rule one, rule two, rule three, and so on and so on, and, and eventually rule k. And those are defined on different values of x's, different intervals, which we're going to correspondingly call i1, i2, i3, and so on, all the way to ik, such that uh, the first interval i1 corresponds to the first rule, rule one, and second rule i2 corresponds to the second rule, I2, and all the way down to rule k corresponds to some interval of x's i sub k. In general, we write the function like so. Just like before, we wrote the absolute value of x. It was x if x was positive or zero. It was negative x if x was negative. You see there, that's like your rule one. And right there, that's like your interval one. Right there's your rule two and the interval two for which it's defined. It could have many. You could have three rules, four rules, and general k rules. Just so happened to be the absolute value function has two different rules. So when we graph such functions, we got to graph each of these rules over the specified domain for which it's given in the rule. Let's look at an example to help us understand this even more. Let's pick blue. All right, we are going to graph this function here. f of x has three different rules. 
The first rule is x squared if x is less than negative 1. Then it is behaving like just the number 3 for values of x between negative 1 and 2. Notice that it's defined to be 3 at x is negative 1, but not at 2. And then finally, it's x if x is bigger than or equal to 2. So we'll just run through these one by one. Rule 1. Rule 1 is x squared, and that's true only for values of x less than negative 1. So I know what the graph of x squared looks like. It's the square function. We could plot some of these points. For instance, if x was negative 2, then negative 2 squared is positive 4. If x was negative 3, negative 3 squared is positive 9. We could keep going if we had more space. And then it's going to behave like this function all the way down until we get to x is negative 1. When x equals negative 1, though, however, you got to remember that it actually switches rules. So it's going to behave like x squared all the way to negative 1. So we're going to keep going down, down, down until we get to negative 1, but it actually doesn't have a value there for this rule. So we draw a little circle to indicate that it's not defined to be this rule at negative 1. It's kind of a nasty looking picture I just drew. Let me redraw that a little bit. Loop to do. That's a little better. Big old arrow up there. How pretty. All right, that's the first rule. That is the rule x squared for x less than negative 1. Right? To the left of negative 1, it is behaving like x squared. Second rule. Rule 2 is the rule just 3. And that's true if x is equal to negative 1 and all the way up to 2. So now, actually, at x is negative 1, we're going to draw a dot at 3 as the output because it obtains that value there. When x equals negative 1, the rule is 3. And then it's going to behave like 3 all the way in between negative 1 and 2, but once again, once we get to 2, we don't have a value there. And so it switches rules. So we put the little open circle looking thing, the hole. It's going to switch rules. It's now going to behave like the third rule when x is 2, and that rule is it's just x. And that's true if x is equal to 2 or bigger than 2. So at 2, the rule is x. If x is 2, then the output is 2. Dot. Draw a dot. It obtains that value. When x is 2, the output is 2. When x is 3, the output is 3. When x is 4, the output is 4. And so on forever. It behaves like that line. You see the three rules there. You see x squared to the left of negative 1 for x. It equals 3 for values of x between negative 1 and 2, and it equals to x if x is bigger than or equal to 2. The entire graph we see there is the graph of our piecewise to function, piecewise defined function, f of x. So this is the kind of procedure you got to go through every time you graph a piecewise defined function. Let's look at a couple more of examples just to get a better idea. All right, a couple of examples here, f of x and g of x, both piecewise defined functions. Let's start with f of x. Let's use a different color. Let's use green. For values of x less than 1, this function is defined to be 1 minus 2x, the line with slope negative 2 and y-intercept 0, comma 1. So that's strictly less than 1. It doesn't happen when x equals 1. So I go to 1. If I were to evaluate that at 1, Notice that 1 minus 2 times 1 is 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And so I'm going to draw a hole, a little circle, at 1 comma negative 1 because I know it only behaves like this to the left of 1. If x was 0, we'd be at 1. If x was negative 1, we'd be at 3 and so on and so on. I get that line there, like so, that is the line y equals 1 minus 2x, and notice it's only true 
for values of x less than 1. We then switch rules to square root x. Notice it's also not defined to be this rule at 1. See, it's strictly bigger than 1 there. So in fact, this function doesn't even have an output at 1. If, though, however, we graph the, the graph of y equals square root x, then at 1, we would be 1. So it starts there, but not equal to. If x was 4, we'd have an output of 2. Remember what the absolute, or excuse me, the square root function looks like? It looks something like that. But notice, it doesn't do this forever. It stops at 4. So instead of keep going, we're just going to stop at 4. And because of the equal part there in the interval for which it's defined, then I know there's a dot at x is 4, comma 2, because we obtained a value of 4. It finally switches rules to 2x minus 1 if x is bigger than 4. If x was 4 here, then 2 times 4 minus 1 is 7. So I would get the point 4, comma 2, or excuse me, 4, comma 7, and I'm going to draw little circle there again because we don't actually have this rule when x is 4 it's only to the to the right of 4 that's a line with slope 2 move over 1 up 2 get another dot we could draw that line forever so there you go there's the graph of f of x in this case finally we'll pick one last color here how about pink g of x, we got this three different rules, x plus 2 of x is less than or equal to negative 1, x squared for values of x between negative 1 and less than or equal to 1, and finally cube root x if x bigger than 1. So for the line x plus 2 equals to y, I know for that rule that if x was negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And hence, I go to negative 1, and the output is 1. If x was negative 2, then the output would be 0. We get the line x plus 2 for values of x less than or equal to negative 1. The place where we're changing rules here, x is negative 1, we obtain that value at that dot. Because that's where it's defined to be. Then it becomes x squared. Now, notice in this rule, if x was negative 1, the place where we're switching rules, negative 1 squared is 1. And in fact, that's the same place where rule 1 ended its rule. So that place right there, negative 1 comma 1, is actually a location where we're switching rules and becoming another, and they happen to be in the same spot. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I know what the x squared graph looks like it's a parabola through the origin like so draw a little closer so it looks something like that man it means be more curvy hold on yeah nice so there you go there's the graph of y equals x squared for values of x between negative one and one and notice again at x is one we have an equal part of this, so we include that on this portion of the graph. Finally, it's cube root x. Cube root x. Hopefully, you remember what that looks like. Notice that if x was 1 here, cube root of 1 is 1. So again, at 1, 1, we're going to continue to follow the same rule. The next perfect cube root is when x is 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. So it's that very slowly increasing function. It looks very similar to square root. It looks something like that. Hence, we get the graph y equals g of x. And there you go. We saw three different examples of piecewise defined functions and an intro with the, with the absolute value function. So I hope you learned a little bit about the introduction to piecewise defined functions, mostly we just practice graphing them, defining them, what they are, the basics. But there's going to be a part two of this video. So look out because we're going to do some more, including given a graph, can we extract the formula of the function? 
and we'll also look at some applications. Okay, now, you know, we gotta, we gotta do something. We gotta, we gotta do Bates, Dates, yeah, peace.